Go ahead. So, um, I mean, will you try to replace Juwan essentially, or will you do things your own way to seek to have the dynamic role change? Uh, uh, I am not Juwan Howard, and uh, I'm going to be me. So, you know, a small thing. I've never sat down during a game. So, there'll be a chair there, but it will be for him. It will not be for me. Uh, uh, and I told the players that yesterday, that I'm not, I'm not replacing Juwan Howard, and, um, but what we have in place is the way that we're going to play. The, uh, look, the guy is a mastermind with ATOs, and uh, it, it, it has blown my mind for three years. Like, I don't know that he's repeated an ATO in any of these games for three years. That's not who I am. So uh, we're gonna have a, a way that we're going to approach our timeouts. We're gonna come out of timeouts organized. We're gonna come out of timeouts with a, uh, a pattern. I'm gonna run the timeout the way that I run it. And it just, it's, but I'm not, I'm not going to mimic him. Um, and I didn't mimic him yesterday in practice and will not uh, today. So was Juwan able to address the team at all yesterday before this all kind of came down? And if so, what, kind of what was the message? Uh, no, or, no, no, he, he, he did not. And uh, he addressed everybody in the program uh, twice late Sunday night via text. And just, it, it, that was a, a family text. Of, What changes, you know, between scouts and um, recruiting, some of those other things, how are you guys giving up any differently? Or? Um, no, this is my scout, Rutgers is my scout, and then Illinois, Howard or Saudi. Chris Hunter will move up. Uh, Chris Hunter was on the floor yesterday for practice. He, he dealt with the bigs, um, and that's terrific, a terrific teacher there. Uh, scouts stay the same. Um, the, uh, Howard Isley is going to be the offensive coordinator, right? It's he and Juwan that have put together this uh, really effective and massive playbook. So you'll see Howard Isley uh, get up, he'll make a call, and then he'll sit down. We're not engaging with referee. He's not, you know, he's not over coaching. And uh, I, I need to make sure that the referees know that. You know, like sometimes they want, oh, it's, you know, all that. Any of these referees that have the time to tell kids to sit down during a basketball game, they're not doing, the, you know, like they're not paying attention to what's going on. Like, we got these guys, you take those 10 guys. Uh, so how, you'll see Howard uh, making calls. And then even during timeouts, He'll give me the call that we're going to go out on the uh, out of the timeout with. Will, will you be able to have any verbal contact with Juwan at all through any of this? Yes, Juwan's my friend. Okay, so it's it's not like you can Zoom. Text, Juwan is my friend. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and. And uh, I, I feel I feel uh, tremendously responsible to my friends to make sure that they're doing well. How's he doing? Juwan is very remorseful, and uh, uh, today is a little better than yesterday. Do you want to address the, or did he apologize post game Sunday? And what do you say to the players? He did not speak to the players on on Sunday. It was a very heartfelt 
text exchange very late in the night on Sunday. So can you speak to the uh, program's reaction to the punishment? Obviously, it's like double player suspended. And well, uh, yeah, I, I think like not like the individual guy specifically. First of all, Ward Manuel did a fabulous job laying it out uh, for the players and for the staff. And I think that all of us would, Andrew would say the same thing. Escalations like that have no place in the game. Okay? And, and everybody involved, everybody, not, not the three people suspended or not just our players, everybody involved has now learned a hard lesson. And uh, you know, we're, we're we are all collectively we are all collectively remorseful for missed opportunities. I raised my hand. Jawan went one way in the shake out, and I didn't think to go with him. Chris Hunter feels the same. We, we, everybody, everybody learned a hard lesson, and you know what? Um, to play basketball. So you've experienced a lot in basketball. Have you ever been part of a situation like this? And, and what experiences do you draw on to navigate this time? That, that's a really interesting question uh, because I was I was racking my brain uh, to to what would this be comparable to and. Uh, I really don't have one. Actually, this morning when I was daydreaming, I was like, well, is this like USA basketball, where you're gathering these guys for a short period of time? Now, obviously, I've been in, engaged with these guys for three years, but it's a, it's a short period of time. And what, what is it that you want to, for them to value? Um, and that was the only, but, but, there is there is nothing that I that I came with, and, and I I was like, well, you know, maybe I should call, you know, pick a guy. Do I call the guy at Louisville, Mike McGee, who's a friend of mine? But come on, I I know this, I know this wholeheartedly, without like poking my chest out. I can run a practice, and I can manage a game, right, and. Some would say that I can do this. I can talk. It might not always make sense, but I can talk. Uh, so um, I think that, that forward together, that's what this has to be, forward together. And I'm, and I'm a part of it. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm no more or less a part of it than Howard Isley or Saudi Washington or Eli. We're, we're doing this together moving forward. I have a question. Yes. You said everyone learned a lesson. Was there a teaching moment where you sat the team down and said, you know, this can't happen, this is why? Was it a, a lesson learned uh, with the players? Ward, Ward Manuel. Okay. Ward Manuel, he, he gave a, uh, like I'm not that savvy with all the stuff that's going on in, in you know the way they teach but he gave a master class in uh, what was learned so he deserves the credit Ward Manual could you elaborate a little bit on what he said yeah that that situations like that in in, in all walks of life there are moments when you, and when that happens, you can go one way or you can go the other. And everybody, everybody went in the wrong direction on this one. So, you know, whatever, whatever needs to happen when this happens, let's, let's each grow from it. Sorry, I'm late. They can go ahead. As far as basketball with the two guys out, I guess, what do you expect out of Brandon, Jace, 
Jeremy and you know some of the front court guys on uh, tomorrow night. Uh, I expect them to be the very best they can be. So I don't, I I don't think like it's similar that they're in, I'm in a similar role to to them, right? Like I'm not Juwan Howard, right? I am not. And their Brandon Johns is not Musa. So be the best Brandon Johns, right? And and be able to to walk out of here tomorrow night and say that that was as good as I could give. And guess what? Take Thursday off and come back Friday and be better than you were on Wednesday. But you, you can't come up with a game plan and say, well, Musa averages 8.1. How are we going to get 8.1? No, that's not going to work. But if Brandon Johns walks in here tomorrow night with his head up, his mind clear, and heart knowing that we need the best Brandon Johns in order to beat Rutgers, then that'll be good enough. And that's the message to, to all of the guys, to, to every guy. And, you know, a little inside baseball. What Terrence Williams and Musa Diabate are doing is they're being the best them. And how are they doing that? Those two kids who are rotation players are playing scout team. Yesterday's practice and today's practice. And they did it with joy in their heart. That was, that was uplifting to see yesterday. You, uh, you mentioned that you wanted your players to be able to take something of value uh, from these five games. What what is that? What, what is your intent? Well, I've always been big on on uh, I, I and I don't mean this in a smart way, a, a smart aleck way. In any, we have five, we have we have on a schedule five five days. We really five games. We have one day. So at the end of today, when we finish practice at six o'clock. I want them to know that they got better and that we got better. And then tomorrow to repeat it, get better. So daily improvement. You've all heard Juwan talk about the 1%. That's what this is about. This isn't about, well, this is gonna be a really successful uh, enterprise if we go five and zero. Oh. But it's gonna be a disaster if we go one and four. No, how, how, how would I know? Like. What I want to do today is everybody, every coach, every support staff person, every manager, every player to walk out of here and say, you know what, I got better. And if we do that, good things will happen. Next, Andrew. Andrew. I mean, you guys are you know, competing for an NCAA tournament spot. Like, is that, is that factor in at all to how you're kind of approaching this? Or? It doesn't weigh. It doesn't weigh on me, uh, and it, it's it's not something that uh, you hear the play. I'm sh look, the players have to be, be aware of it. Um, but the only thing that we can control is this idea of improvement, right? We 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 have to play better. We have to play better against Rutgers than we did at the Rack. We have to play better against Rutgers than we did at Wisconsin. We have to be better in practice today than we were yesterday. Everything else will, you know, th those, are, those are rewards. These are um, our responsibilities today. Soldier? So situations like these can go a variety of ways and you never really know, is it, do you view it as an opportunity almost to be galvanized to a certain degree with uh, together as a team? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I would say it this way. The only way we can move forward is together, right? If we move forward and this guy makes a left and I make a right, well, then we didn't move forward. Maybe these three people move forward. So to me, uh, here's the power, right? Like in, in this hand, if I have an open hand, not a lot of power that can be generated. But here, power can be generated. So let's move powerfully forward. 
not just, well, uh, let's get Tuesday out of the way. So I, I don't know about galvanizing, and, but I do know this, that it's clear to all of us, to everybody involved, that we're only doing this together. And to be honest with you, if we fail, we fail together. Go back over to Andrew. Sunday Post game has kind of ignited a, a national debate on the handshake line. I was wondering if uh, I'd be interested in hearing if you had a, a thought on it, whether they're still useful or get rid of them all the time. Do not get rid of them. We cannot give in. We cannot give in. Come on. It's, it's a healthy competition. And in healthy competition, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So there's salesmen all over Michigan. They're going to go into a, a company today. They're either going to get the sale or they're not going to get the sale. But I'm not going to shake hands and say thank you for this opportunity. So, look, this is about this is about more than basketball. It's about teaching young people lessons. And not just the young people that are playing the game, right? All the young people that watched, all the young people that support these teams, right? Man up, man up, right? The three-point shooting after the last few games hasn't hasn't been there, the open looks, certainly. Is there a rhyme or reason to it for you? Have you been around the team that maybe was this erratic? Because we've certainly seen some games where they were a lot. Uh, I don't really know the rhyme or the reason. Um, it, it's just amazing. And and uh, some of these student managers are, are fascinating to me. The I'm sure it was the other night, two of the kids were having a conversation at another table and they turned around to me and said, Coach, do you know that we've never won a game where we shot higher than 25% or less than 41%? My first reaction was, you need a hobby. Like, you need to do something that's different than this. Uh, and, and then I, but then when I, I was uh, at shoot around that night, Steve Lapis, who's a really good friend and was doing the game for CBS, he told me, he said the same thing. And I said, I don't, I don't have a reason. I mean, it's not, we take a lot of shots. We practice a lot of shots. Uh, we take game shots. No team that I've been involved with here has guys that come in and get more shots. Um, I just, a game shot is different than a than you know shooting one in the PDC at eight in the morning, and uh, I just want our guys to shoot it and concentrate on the next shot. Not worry about the last shot. Not worry about the, st the statistics, and think that the ball is going in. Are the young guys able to do that yet? Do you think? No, no, no. But they're growing. They're they're all growing and. and uh, Hopefully tomorrow night. It, I know. Actually, hopefully it starts today. Awesome. Phil, just to clarify, you mentioned Ward Manuel addressed the team. Was that a practice yesterday or a, a meeting? What were the circumstances? Yes. Okay. Yes. He he spoke. He spoke. Uh, he spoke to the team. And, and the beauty was, up until three fifteen yesterday, everybody was working on their own set of facts. So Ward Manuel came and gave the players the facts, right, about Coach. Uh, he, he had not, you know, to be clear, he had not, Terrence and Musa, that decision was not made until the Big Ten accepted it uh, later in the evening. But he told them that it was probable that they, that they would not play. Uh, and he was, he was very blunt 
with everybody that there are no, that's not going to be repeated. Right? That, that is just not going to be repeated and it was not acceptable. Another problem to Abigail? There's been a lot of noise around this team all year, but even more so in the wake of all of this. How does that kind of affect the mental aspect and what are you telling the guys? I'm sorry, the noise? Yeah. Like the, um, the hype and... Yeah, well with the recruiting class coming in. Right. Um, I th we have been have been consistent with what other people say about you. You know whether you're the number one recruiting class, and whether this guy's a one and done, whether that guy's an all American. That's what other people say. But what's the court? What, what, what are we doing on the court? Um, and with regard to how the players uh, approach going forward, everything that this team wants to accomplish and has stated as a team goal is still there. And even tomorrow night, tomorrow night is not a must win because in games that are must win, then does that become a must lose? Are they collecting new uniforms on Thursday? Have they not told me that one? So, uh, the, the, and I don't mean this in a mean spirited way, but the external noise uh, takes practice to, to block it out and to do what we set out to do. And, and I go back to that idea, 1% better today. Going back to the meeting with, with Ward, that bluntness that you just referred to, uh, what impact can that have? Having that tone set so early in all of this, what impact can that have as you all move forward? Uh, what it was, was it, it was a master class in, in leadership. It was a master class in leadership. And now you, now you, now take in all the external factors, right? There's a Michigan grad, a Michigan parent, right? a Michigan administrator, an African-American man, student athlete, okay? So if the players, which they do, have blood that's flowing through their veins, they got it. And it was a master class in leadership. And if you wanna, if, if we wanna be like, uh, we wanna get a, a, a script underneath a TV, I don't even know what they call those things, the, the scroll underneath, like, uh, uh, crisis map. No, no. It was it was leadership to the fullest extent, and I applaud him for it. James, Phil, you mentioned that you can still be in contact with Juwan during the suspension. I guess is, is there anything he's allowed to do to help the team during the suspension? Is he allowed to offer game input at all? Or anything? Uh, Juwan is is uh, permitted to have contact with players. Uh, He's permitted to have contact with coaches, uh, staff. Uh, he will and has expressed his love for everybody, and everybody in the program has expressed their love for him. Mike? Just uh, working on something on Will Cheddar. Um, wondering what you've seen out of his development this season, um, kind of being that behind the scenes, but also you know, making sure he grows for, for the future. Well, during his recruiting, uh, I have said, if he can play, this is the stuff of movies, right? Like football quarterback, decides to do the discus, wins the state championship, 3.99999, China for third and fourth grade or fourth and fifth grade. And uh, his, his, it may not be a word, sponginess, his taking this all in. And being able to take a step back and watch him be coached by Juwan Howard, and this kid has joy in his heart because of that. You know, it's rare. It's rare for any person 
to be able to say, man, I, I don't have all the answers. We all have all the answers, right? We don't know all the questions, but we know all the answers. And this kid came in wide-eyed, hasn't changed, um, and has just served an extraordinary role on the team in that, and I'm trying to rack my brain now to make sure, like yesterday's practice, today's practice, he's Ron Harper. Pretty high praise. Now, on a personal note, there are guys that I want him to be like. You know, like, could he be Kyle Young from Ohio State? Could he be uh, a versatile power forward? And there has clearly been growth in his game. And guys that serve on this scout team get an awful lot of basketball information, different styles and things like that. So I, I think uh, I think we're in for you know casting a movie here by the time he's done. Jamie. You said right off the bat you're not Juwan Howard. So how will you be different in these practices in these five games? How do you see yourself different than him? Uh, and I'm not being self-deprecating, but I don't have the offensive mind that he has. I I, I don't have that uh, in my in my DNA in my coaching DNA. Um, I, I don't have a library of ATO plays like, like he has. Um, I, I like he, I love practice. I think practice is, practice is really the coach's time. Practice is the coach's time, right? It's like a classroom. So the professor's time is when they deliver the lectures and, and prepare the plan, right? And then when the students take the test, there's no professor that makes them about them. So the great coaches make the games about the players, not about themselves. That's what he does. That's what I do. And uh, the The love that he has for his players is just extraordinary. I can't be, I, I, I love them, but I'm not as, he's a big presence. Um, so, and I'm gonna tell you, like I tossed and turned on, on Sunday night. And finally, I woke up Monday morning. It was really very clear to me. They didn't ask me to be Juwan Howard. They asked me to be me. And you know what? I'm confident in that. Go ahead. Uh, Bill, you've been a coach for a long time, and I'm sure you've seen all sorts of different game management at the, at the end of a, a game that's been decided. Did, what was your reaction to the, the pressure defense from you guys and the timeout from Wisconsin? And did you see anything in I did not. I did not. I think that it was it was uh, it was ebb and flow, it, right? I, I do think I do think that that's a really 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 sensitive situation, right? Because who subs first, right? Well, why? Who's on the floor? So uh, I think that it, again, it's, it's not what happened has happened. Uh, and no one, no one, no one walked out without learning hard lessons. Does anybody have anything else? Okay, coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.